I'm not sure who said that, but I, I've been looking to, for who said that quote, because it wasn't me, but I know that it's true. Uh, we're dangerous. We use our imaginations. We stir things up, you know? This is good. We need to do this. We need stir-uppers. But we don't claim ourselves as writers because, um, and, and any kind of art really is, uh, you know, we're not quite to be trusted. We're a little bohemian. We're a little outside that get a job, go to work, produce something. What are you over there writing? Who cares if you write? You know, nobody cares if you write. So we don't claim ourselves as writers. And there's another reason that we don't claim ourselves as writers, and that's because when you say, I'm a writer, what's the first thing people say? What have you written? And you say, oh, I've written some short stories. You know, I, I you know, fool around with some poems. And they say, oh, and the second thing? Have you been published? If you haven't been published, then you're not a writer. <laughs> if you haven't been published, then you're not a writer. That's because being published gives some kind of validity to it. Um, if you've been published, then the world says, yes, you're a writer. And so for us to say first we're a writer, I think a writer is someone who writes. A writer is someone who writes. <laughs> and so. Um, uh, and so that's all you have to do. But, but we, if we don't claim ourselves as writers, we're never going to make the time to write. It's not going to be important enough unless we say, I'm a writer, so I'm taking this time to write. And I'm going to do it at this time, or I'm going to do it at that time, or I'm going to do it at you know, whatever time you set up for yourself. I'm a writer. I used to practice that in the mirror. I look at myself in the mirror. I'm a writer. And I couldn't like, do it with a straight face. I'm a writer. <laughs> so claiming yourself as a writer is the first step in creating some kind of a writing practice that will enable you to sustain so that you will get those pages filled and that you will get that book finished. Um, so the second thing, once you have done this claiming of yourself as writer and saying, I'm a writer, I'm writing a book or I'm doing whatever, then you will make the time. And you have to find the time that works for you. And if you start off by saying, every day I'm going to come home from work and I'm going to write for two hours, chances are you're not. If you say, I'm going to get up, like, like, you know, I could sooner come home from work and do the writing than I could get up at 5 a.m., 4 a.m. My friend Sarah Lewis would get up at 4 a.m., go in the laundry room before the kids woke up and be in there writing like this um, at 4 o'clock in the morning. And maybe that's when some people's muse comes, but not mine. Um, but find the time, and if you set your, if you set your goals too high, you're probably not going to be able to uh, attain them. Two hours is a long time to sustain when, you know, on a day, if you say, I'm going to do it every day. New Year's resolutions, what is it, like 80%? I've already broken mine. I said I was going to blog weekly, and I've done one blog so far this year. So 80% of the um, New Year's resolutions are broken, so the, that kind of thing is not going to help us. So, okay, 10 minutes a day. I can find 10, 15 minutes a day to write. And that's what it takes. I'm going to make that 10 minutes a day. My, when this book, when I first decided about this book and was talking about doing this book, I was going to do a calendar because I thought what we need is uh, we need to make an appointment with ourselves because you would not, if you promised someone you would be here this morning, you would not, not just not show up. You would show up. If you have a dentist appointment and you can't come, you don't just not go. You call and say, I can't do it. We don't do that with some of the things that we promise that we'll do for ourselves, like writing, for example. So if you make an appointment with yourself and you put it on your calendar, I'm going to do my daily writing practice at noon today, so you put it on your daily calendar. That's, so that's what the book was going to be. And I was going to have a writing prompt for every day. And I'll tell you why I was going to have a writing prompt for every day in a minute. But the, the point is, is that you make an appointment with yourself. I'm going to take a half an hour and I'm going to do my writing practice and put it on your calendar and sit down. New World Library said, well, we don't really do calendars, so could you do a book? And I said, yeah, I could do a book. I'd never done a book before, but yeah, I could do a book. And so that's how it became a book instead of a calendar. But I am going to do that calendar, because I think this is really important for us to make that date with ourselves and put it on our calendar. So then, then, you, would have, then you have the time. Now you have you claimed yourself as writer. Now you have the time to write. And what are you going to write about? Has this ever happened to you? 
got the time, got your pen, got your pen, you're ready to go. What is scarier than this? You know? Or you're sitting here with your fingers just kind of like vibrating above the keyboard, like little hummingbirds. And you know, as soon as you put that first word on the page, you have already, it's the wrong word, you've already ruined the page. You know? <laughs> I gotta say something here about ideas and how we can't get ideas onto the paper. It's because ideas aren't language. Ideas are, are more um, intuitive kinds of imagery things. And once you start wrapping language around them, which language is so concrete and specific, so you, what your idea is is never going to be exactly on, on the page. So just so that you know that. But choosing the right first word. Right, this is why I stopped writing my fiction on the computer, because I could hardly get my first sentence down before I was editing it because it was wrong. It's always wrong. The first sentence is always wrong. Do you know how many times I made my notes? How many times I started my notes? I got up at 3 o'clock this morning and I knew my notes were wrong. That was after I went down to the business center at 11.30 last night to change my notes so that my introduction would be right. So uh, then, I don't know if you saw me over there, probably not, but I was over there scratching my notes this morning too, sitting over there. I sat in my car for a few minutes. You know, getting that right introduction. What's the right first word? Well, there isn't a right first word. You know, there isn't. None of them is going to be right. And so just go with the one that comes. <laughs> That's what I say. And this, is <laughs> and this is why the other thing about uh, uh, writing practice and why I believe in it so much and why it works for so many people is because we start with a writing prompt. And when you start with a writing prompt, you don't have to know the right word or the wrong word. You just get to start. That prompt is like music that invites you to dance. It's like the starting blocks for a runner, you know, that you push off and you're ready to go around the track. So, and it doesn't matter what the prompt is. You have written your own prompt there, by the way. Um, and so this book has a prompt for every day. What happens when we have prompts, I'm going to just read you a prompt or two out of here. What happens when we have a prompt? Okay, uh, March 17th, an emergency exit. It's not describe one, it's not tell a story about one, it's just an emergency exit. And I bet each and every one of you got some kind of an image in your mind, some kind of a little picture, a detail in your mind about either an emergency exit, about the word exit, about emergency, something came for you. So what you do with writing practice is you grab the tail end, or any part of this detail that you can, any part of that image that you can get a hold of, you grab it, you jump on board, and you take it for a ride, however long you've given yourself, 10 minutes, 17 minutes. I can't go writing by hand longer than um, 20 minutes. I get hand cramps. Um, so there, and there you go, and you're off. And what will happen is this. Well, I don't want to write about an emergency exit. <laughs> Never mind. Just, you're just getting the pen moving. Once you get the pen moving, you're going to sur hopefully surrender to the page. You're going to stop thinking. The thing that you were trying to do when you were looking for that right word is you were thinking, and you were doing what that left side of your brain does best, which is measure, judge, evaluate, analyze, you're trying to fill the form with something that is the right thing, and we love our brains for being able to do this, but it really gets in the way when you're writing. What you want to do is get into that place where you're, where you're outside yourself. You're not self-conscious. The ego has stepped aside. The editor, we don't know. Maybe she's gone out for coffee, sharpening her pencils or whatever she's doing, because there you are. So you start writing, and you're not writing it about. Each one of us has a story about an emergency exit. As you begin writing the story, what you want to write about is going to show up on the page. Organically, it's going to come. It may not be the story that you intended to write, but it's the story that wants to be told. And we can't always say, this is the story I want to tell. We have to let the stories come through us. If you keep pushing those stories away, they're going to keep showing up again and again. If you keep stopping them from 
showing from writing them, if you keep stopping that, it's going to be whatever you try to write, there's always going to be the guard at the palace gate that says, who goes there? And every time who goes there you have to say and identify, then you're not writing what authentic stories want to be written. Instead, you're writing what you think should be written or you think you want to write. And so writing in this way, to be a writer who continues to write, you have to surrender to the page. You have to surrender to the process. You have to allow that free fall to happen. And boy, that's scary. There isn't anything we like more than being in control. And when you turn yourself over to your art, you have lost control. And this gets so scary because anything can happen. And it can be very dangerous for us. It can be very dangerous for telling secrets that we said we'd never tell. It can be very dangerous for just exposing ourselves, being vulnerable on the page. And I'm not just talking about um, the kinds of maybe things that you would tell that would be deep secrets that uh, your mother wouldn't want you to tell. You know, not those kinds of family secrets. It is that being vulnerable on the page. Like, if you know that I I'm so insecure about how I'm going to start my talk today that I get up at 3 a.m. to rewrite the, you know, if I put that on the page and let you know how vulnerable I am, are you going to like me? <laughs> are you going to respect me? Are you going to accept me? Are you going to accept me? Or are you going to reject me? And so that's why it's so scary to put what we are on the page. There it is, concrete, black and white. Yikes. When I'm doing writing practice and I get to a scary place, I can even see the difference in my handwriting. My handwriting, instead of this when I'm open and, and loose and really moving and my handwriting is just flowing, flowing, flowing like this. And once I get to those dangerous places, you can even tell, your body will tell you, your hands get, you know, my writing gets really cramped. I stop breathing, you know. I have to do this again and again breathe again and again to loosen up to just it's okay because the thing about writing practice and when you're just writing in your notebook and you're doing this kinds of thing it's not for publication this is raw first draft stuff you're going to work with this this first draft stuff is not what is the book i mean none of us it never comes out perfect in first draft well maybe once and i don't know anybody when it has ever come out perfect Maybe one word, maybe one image, maybe there's something. And this is why we call them drafts and why you have 75 endings to um, as the sun, uh, the sun also rises. I think that's what I've heard, 72 endings. Somebody said to Hemingway, why? Why did you write it so many times? He says, I couldn't get the words right. You know, this is what it takes. All of these drafts, we write it, we get in the, just get the story down. If you will write every day for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, in 17 minutes, by hand, I can get about 450 words. I have some statistics here. I wrote them down because I'm, I, I don't have them memorized. If I can, let me see if I can find these. But how, how wonderful this is and how, what will happen if you do this on a daily basis. OK. A pay, if, if you do um, 20 minutes a day, you get 400 or so words. The number of words in a good book is fewer than 100,000, so. 250 20-minute sessions and you got your book. That's less than a year. 200, I, think that, I think a baby would be about two weeks premature in 250 days. So that's how long it takes to do that. Page a day, 365 pages. How many pages in a good book? Ah, 300, 285, 315. Page a day. It's like the Swiss cheese method of writing, you know? You go after it every day, you do a little bit. Um, if you wait until, if you wait until as soon as, until you can go to that garret in Paris, you know? If you wait until you can get away on a writing retreat. Um, and, oh, and I, here's another thing I want to tell you about writing practice and doing it on a regular daily basis. Can we go to 8.30? I'm going to give you another five minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, the thing about, about doing it every day is that um, it, when you sit down at the page, then you are, you know, you, your body knows, and it's like you click into that, um, 
intuitive way, I'm ready to write now. Like when you lay on a massage table, how your body gets ready to accept the massage. When you get ready to run, how you kind of warm up and you're ready to go and you can do it. It's the same thing that happens with your writing. 